What's up, guys? Walter the Dude here bringing you some Wake Island Battlefield 1942. So, first of all, I'm just going to spare you the initial fucking two minutes it took me to get to the fucking land in the first place. Um, as you can see, I have landed on, um, I don't know, Southwestern Point, whatever you want to call it. Bottom of the fucking U. Or C, or backwards C. Anyway, um, there's a number of different ways to approach this map. Um, the way that I like to do it, I mean, people make fun of the pincher attack thing all the time, right? But the best way really to approach this map is to straight up pincher attack it. By the way, just, these are straight up. These are more or less like pub strats. None of these are competitive strats. There's a lot of things you can do competitively on this map that are just so fucking overkill for, well, I don't know what just happened to that plane, that are so overkill for pubs. Um... The uh, the initial destroyer that you can actually grab, the uh, Hats, was it the Hatsuki or whatever? I don't even think of the name of it. Um, that can actually be pixel aimed, and you can shoot the airfield right off the uh, right off the bat. You can take down those planes. Um, if you know your pixel aims, you can drop the airfield planes. They will never get up. Their air will be shut down. Um, they're completely fucked. Obviously, totally changes the dynamic of this game when allies who start off with everything no longer get access to their air power throughout the entire round. Um, it was a brutal, rude awakening when I first played the team who utilized that strategy against us. One of the many reasons the battlefield needed to be tweaked and updated and changed. Like I said, EA refused to do that, and the game eventually died out. Um, so it's a lot of fun to play pubs with people that didn't necessarily play competitively because they won't be abused. Um, <laughs> that was a combination of abusing and utilizing abusing and utilizing these uh, cheese ball strate strategies and tactics that uh, eventually just kill the competitive play. Um, there's a number of different ways to gray all sorts of different flags. They're kind of goofy, probably shouldn't be there. Um, one of the cool things, one of the cool sort of fundamental concepts that Battlefield did right without even realizing it was actually making large cap radiuses. Um, it's it's one of the things that makes this game a lot of fun. So obviously, as you can see, it's relatively simple. You got a whole bunch of buildings around here. I'm going to try to grenade this uh, fucking tank to death. These grenades are like little miniature nuke bombs, by the way. They get, what, four or five of these? Uh, currently being shot from somewhere. Um, grenades do a fuck ton of damage to tanks. You should not be uh, regenerating them as fast as you do when you go up to an ammo respawn. But, alas, you do. A lot of the people that you're playing in pubs right now, when you start, when they start taking damage in their tanks, it's it's so funny because they will start, uh, they will bail out of their tanks almost immediately. Obvious, I shouldn't say obviously. In competitive play, that is a major, major, major no-no. You never, ever, ever bail out of any, any vehicle. Um, it really changes the dynamics of competitive play because the only thing worse than dying or not capturing a point is like an enemy capture a tank because that means they are up one tank and you are down one tank and you are so fucked um, you know slash fucking kill yourself if you give up an enemy tank and the team takes it uh, fortunately in pub play it's not competitive play and a lot of guys like to give up their tanks fairly easily I'm not entirely sure this guy is one of them we do our little dance song and dance here for a while this medic gun um, there are several ally medic guns uh, I think it's, this is, did he just give up his tank? <laughs> I think he did, because he couldn't find me. So he got out to try to kill me on foot. And sucks to be that guy. Um, taking some grenade damage from somewhere. I'm sure I'll find him eventually. There are several medic guns uh, for the Allied side. One of them is, I can't think of it, I want to say it's the MP-18. I don't know if this is actually the MP-18. But this one that has that particular barrel. Oh, found him. Yeah, he's slow and stupid. Um, apparently I'm using the name Taste of My Blade because I have a thing for World of Warcraft. Um, anyway, this particular gun has a slow rate of fire, and as a result of the patch that came in that made it inconsistent in shooting people that are running at um, angles that are close to parallel to you, uh, this is one of the worst medic guns. Uh, any of the guns that have a fast rate of fire, the other... Um, or, I'm sorry, this is the MP-18. I'm Japanese. I keep saying that I'm allied. I'm not. I'm Japanese. I keep thinking I'm allied for some reason. Um, <laughs> sucks to be those guys. Um, the, uh, the allied version, the Thompson, um, 
that has a much faster fire rate, usually much more powerful. It has a shorter range, but most of the infantry fights take place within that range that it's most effective. So usually a pretty good bet to go with the uh, the Thompson if you get a chance. If you see that on the ground, I would definitely pick it up. This guy's a moron. Got another Zooker in here. That's cute. See if I can kill him. Yep. Um, one of the reasons, too, real quick, I'll point out, my name right now is showing up in red at the upper left. Oftentimes, you're going to be seeing that in green. This is still one of the early matches that I played. So, number one, I'm still trying to get a feel for things again. There's a thing that you can do. It's a console command. It's game.addplayer2buddylist, space, and then the number that you see next to whatever name you want to add in the uh, tab score menu. So that is a way that will show up. Whoever's name you add to that list will always show up. That name, whenever it sees that name, it will always show up that name as green. So it's an awesome way to highlight yourself or friends so you can look at the map and instantly know their locations without asking where they're at. Also very useful to see your own uh, see your own kills and things like that. Let's see if I can run that guy down. And only hope that he kills me. As you can see, missing just every fucking round. Uh, I just put an entire clip in the air. Uh, this guy's gonna come out. I got three fucking dudes. Not much you can do. I mean, I mean, how mad can you really be at something like that? I mean, that's that's why the game. That's just part of the game. Um, this map, the allies. If you cap out all those points, um, they will cease to have a place to spawn on, and as a result, the match will it will end. So. Um, try to take down an SPD. The most effective way of taking down any single airplane is with a uh, any type of uh, mounted MG like this. Uh, let's see if I can take this guy down. I don't remember if I'm able to or not. Oh, he's starting to smoke. He's starting to smoke. Plane's on fire. He's bailed out. Yeah, he's gone. Um, most effective way of taking him out. What happened was was they actually made a few balance changes that were were good. Um. Uh, Flak used to be very, very powerful. I think they actually increased it for a while, and then they toned it down, which was which was nice because they actually added. I think they added in some Flak, and I think after they toned down Flak, they left in the Flak that they the extra Flak stations that they added in. Um, Flak, in my opinion, is not a whole lot of fun because it's very, very powerful. Uh, it's it's easy to use. There's zero to no skill. Try to take these assholes down. Um, so one of the ways that they balanced it was by adding in these handle mags, took that guy down as well. Um, and uh, anyway, the most effective way of taking out a plane is hopping into that uh, number two position, dropping them like that. Ultimately, planes need to be balanced in a number of different ways. Um, a fantastic, you will, well, it's, it's really hard to say. Planes are awesome in this game because they take a lot of skill to do really well. So. It's not like any person can get in there and do really well. Um, an average Paya in a shitty server can kind of look like they're stomping on people. But ultimately, if it's filled with decent players, you can't get away with this low-flying, low-speed bullshit that most of these um, ding-dongs that I've seen in these pub servers do. There's one guy in particular in 1942 server that we see all the time. It's kind of silly how often he's there. And he gets away with a lot of that stuff. But... Um, you can't uh, can't do that um, as far as uh, in competitive play. The balance changes ultimately that would have been nice to see planes is you essentially need far fewer bombs. They start off with 15 bombs. An excellent pilot will be one-shotting everything regardless of where it's at every time. Every tank will be one-shot, Every whether it's a light or a heavy tank. Heavy tanks take more damage. You have to hit them more direct on. But an excellent pilot will be one-shotting everything instantly. Um, you will not be taking them down. Good thing that guy went in front of me. Um, ever. And um, they have the ultimate end-all be-all strategy for any map that had air power was to drop, like I said, everybody's air goes to the other side of... Um, yep, that sucks. I don't even know what hit me. Uh, I think I was Panzer... Was I Panzer Shrek? Oh, I think some guy ran his fucking jeep into me or something kamikaze me. Um, this would be excellent spawn camping. I would kill to have one of the actuals or the SPDs, any of the two bomber planes right now. Um, anyway, what ended up happening was because uh, those planes, 
uh, were so devastating they can hang out over your spawn for so long without having to go get more bombs. Basically, it was just this, you know, once you spawn in, or once that happens, once any team got into position with that happening, you were, uh, you were dead. So, that's not uncommon to even happen in pubs. Once, well, pubs, these pubs are going really bizarre. The style of play is very different because everyone is so terrible, but eventually what will happen if people keep playing this is, um, that snowball effect that I so detest, regardless of which game it is in, that snowball effect um, takes will take place much more rapidly, much faster, and then it's much more dominating and almost impossible to get rid of. So um, that will happen as players progress in skill. Ultimately, the game will blow itself out. The one way around that, as I've said before as well, is playing in the monolithic 64-player servers where there's no such thing as good or bad, and everybody just gets shit on all day long. As you can see, there's one guy left alive right now on the Allied team. If we can stomp this piece of dog shit out, the entire Allied team is going to lose. The entire Allied team will lose. Um, I think he ends up grabbing a point because, as of right now, I'm recording this postcom. I've got <laughs> another 15 minutes left in this. And either I sit around here driving a Jeep or he caps the airfield, which is what it looks like he's doing. Um... The airfield, so the airfield is at center point there. I don't want to say that's the last point you should go to capture, but the airfield is usually a deadly point to try to capture because there's a lot of commotion, a lot of activity, and has a huge cap radius. So you can have guys all over the place. Um, grenades are going off. There's usually a tank here. It can be very deadly to try to go capture by yourself. Um, I came in. I've got the point grade. I killed the guy. I should be holding tab to see how many dudes are there. I'm just, like I said, just sort of getting back into the swing of it. Can't tell. Is that a guy over there? Yep, looks like it. Can't shoot him with this. He, oh, there we go. He took some damage finally. And that was lovely. So, um, that was one of those instances where... Ooh, nice little chi off for me. That was one of those instances where uh, you're strafing, and if I had kept running the way that I was, he wouldn't have been able to hit me. With the way they do the uh, the net code stuff, you saw that damage just went, and I somehow lined up perfectly with his his gun. And even though he's a fucking scrub and he's not strafing or anything like that, the way the net code is now, just lots of times. Uh, see this guy back here. I don't know if I can take him down or not. Uh, anyway, that's what happens. It's not uncommon to have some guy miss every single shot, and then all of a sudden your health just goes from full to zero instantaneously, or um, like I said, uh, just throw all of your fucking bullets in the midair. When that patch first came into play, um, I was so excited. I think I hopped into a random server, and I think I bumped into uh, Bruce. And I was so excited. I uh, I got the jump on him, and uh, he was strafing back and forth, doing his thing. And it's always exciting to play against better players, because, you know, that's, that's where the action is at. If you take down those guys, well, then you're a good player too, right? So... Anyway, long story short, I got the jump on him, and he was strafing back and forth. We both damaged each other a little bit, but uh, we threw both of our clips in the more or less air and emptied our, our pistols as well, and uh, nobody died. And then we both like backed off to safety and started healing ourselves up. And after that just happened, I was like, what the fuck? Because one of us should have killed the other guy. And that was basically the beginning of the end, so... As you can see, I'm having trouble looking around. I'm trying to find where the dude is at this flag. There's one guy who just came out of nowhere. I don't know what the rest of my teammates are doing. I think one of the common, especially if you're somebody who's not completely terrible, I think it's a common mistake to assume you just you trust your teammates sometimes. You assume that they're going to do something because they're in the right position. Oftentimes gets you in trouble. Like you'll see like a, a tank or something like that looking at two tanks, right? And you're going to take maybe one of the tanks, you know, is in a more sweet spot. You could take him out, but the other tank sees you. So you want to take that tank out, right? Well, no, think again, because, <laughs> um, you know, that tank is going to end up shooting you, despite the fact that you've got a teammate sitting there with, like, a bazooka pointed right at that tank's ass. And they're fucking stupid, and you end up dying because of it. Uh, happened quite a bit tonight. This game, uh, I played a bunch of rounds earlier tonight. Um, I'm actually having trouble getting some more recordings because they keep voting the map back to uh, Kane. 
and uh, I think I've already got a round of cane coming out, and I think I've recorded another one after that on the other side, so I don't want to keep making rounds, recordings of the same round. I mean, I keep killing it, which is nice. I mean, it's always fun to show videos where you do well, but uh, I'm not recording any of them because it's just, I don't want to, it seems boring to show, what was it, fucking uh, Operation Kane, you know, like eight times in a row. But for some reason, the dudes on that server keep keep voting it back to the same map, unfortunately. Um, what is it? I mean, my goal will be to try to play, you know, each map twice um, from either side. Uh, I would love to do, I haven't played with uh, DB and Bruce in a while, I would love to play with those guys. To get super hardcore spawn camping mode on, you're going to have to play with some friends. Um, I think it's frustrating sometimes because playing with friends, uh, I'm not always guaranteed to get the top score. Uh, especially if you want to get into spawn camping mode, it's just not possible. I'm trying to think of what the best analogy is. If you want to get into spawn camping mode, like I played a few rounds of Kursk and Karkov the other day, which are two rounds... I'm sorry, two uh, two maps that are notorious for being horrific for spawn camping, and we've got we've done some of the worst spawn camping of all time on on both of those maps. Uh, they both have some nasty, nasty artillery that's sitting up at the top. You can rain shit down on the opponent's base. But one of the ways you get in position to do that spawn camping is you have to have dominance on every stage of the map. And because I'm the only person that has any type of rudimentary flying skills, it's usually me that gets the designated pilot position. So everyone else gets to go in and fucking drop X-Pack bombs on their faces. Um, I was playing earlier tonight, and we're playing Market Garden. And it's funny, because like, I can go... <laughs> this guy has like debt packs and mines sitting. Um, I'm just going to go pick up his kit. But I guess my teammate's just going to take my tank and drive over the fucking landmines with it. So... Um, there you go. He's dead. Wasn't that nice? Didn't really want my tank anyway. Um, might be able to just take this guy's Zook and gun down that tank. I don't know where it's at. Oh, this guy's shooting at me. And there you go. Just fucking can't hit something reliably. The rounds that you're seeing in this, I think, I mean, I ended up doing okay. I think I die. I died four times. I think I die six or seven times. And... You know, in the grand scheme of things, dying six or seven times and getting whatever it is, I think I get 60 some odd kills or 70 kills by the end of this. I don't know what KD that is. Seven and 70, I don't know. I mean, it's not terrible. Uh, 10 to 1, close to that. But it's not It's not what I'm used to. It's not excellent. It's not what I'm capable of. But a lot of you guys, you I mean, you've asked to see infantry stuff. This is probably the most infantry that you may ever see, short of getting a map like even Stalingrad or Berlin. But even those maps, uh, I'm going to go grab this guy. So this is the Thompson. has a faster fire rate than those other guns. Um, you're just not going to ever be able to see that Waldo D. Dude from so many years ago because that's uh, just not possible. Can't walk in and drop three guys right off the bat and take very little damage because your strafing and aiming is better. Got to capitalize on most of the people in here refusing to strafe or dodge or, you know, getting the surprise on them. One of the big things that I, I like about this, too, um, that you notice um, is that I should be getting the jump or the drop on most people. Part of that is latency. I have pretty decent ping to the server. I think I have 50 ping, which is very nice. Um, the other part of that is map awareness and positioning. So... Oh, he gunned that guy down. Okay, so I'll have to go over there. So, and this is what I, this is what, in my opinion, like a game like COD takes out of the equation. When you have maps that are so tiny and so confined with limited routes, you take away, you take away the majority of that semblance for map positioning, awareness, um, and uh, getting that surprise jump on somebody, outsmarting somebody else. You don't get to have any of that stuff. Um, Debating about waiting for a plane right now or the tank. So I'm doing run around looking like an idiot. You don't get to have any. Um, there's none of that skill that comes into play. So it's uh, the skill that ends up coming into play is more more along the lines of um, you know uh, hiding over a barrel, barrel glitching or something like that, and uh, camping, moving really slowly, uh, building up kill streaks. That's the kind of skill that goes into it. 
So, I mean, it's not to say, obviously, that there's no skill, because clearly there is some skill, but I feel like, you know, compared to a, a game like this where, like I said, a, a great player will triumph over a, a mediocre player 99 times out of 100, it's just uh, it's, it's that much more obvious if that's the kind of skill that a game's going to use. Um, if you want to debate which skill is, you know, superior, uh, obviously it would be the type of skill that uh, I feel like allows for consistency. And that would be the key word. Uh, you either learn and get better or you keep making the same mistakes. Most people in this game keep making the same mistakes. There's a... Uh, what is his name? Um, it's one of the fucking... I would... <laughs> oh, he just got fucking gunned down. One of the uh, pub... Oh, <laughs> see? The, oh, gosh, I just love it. I love outsmarting people. He's so fucking stupid. Feels so nice doing shit like this. Here we go, and that was actually incredibly lucky. Um, there's a pub all-star guy that uh, I see doing all sorts of goofy shit, and uh, he's usually in this this pub, um, the 1942 mod server, Red Baron or whatever. It's kind of funny. Uh, gosh, I was in earlier tonight. They just keep capping this point. I'm just keep sitting here, so I guess more points for me. Um, See him doing a lot of goofy stuff in there, camping outside of flags, but refusing to actually take him. Whoops. I like seeing the little uh, little clans that are popping up in this too. These BB guys, I've seen these guys a few times. They have some clan apparently. They call themselves the BBs. I guess it's short for getting butt butt bammed, butt bonged. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever the fucking analogy is for being fucking terrible and having your shit pushed in the entire round. Um, but it's funny, some guys in the pubs will do okay, um, but, uh, they'll do goofy stuff to get on top, like, like I said, hanging outside of a point the entire time and not getting any flag caps. It's a bit like playing, um, well, this is, it's not too different from CTF, but it's a bit like playing, well, it's a bit like playing this, like it's a fucking TDM, and it's not a TDM. That said, I'm always all for spawn camping, and... Uh, you know, in match play, it's it's an extremely effective tactic to, you know, if you can get in their base and cause massive havoc and destroy vehicles and sit on a repair pad, um, it can be very, very effective. But uh, usually what happens in, in pub play is uh, people just fucking, <laughs> they won't stop spawning at a point. And in this server, because of the fast respawn, if you sit outside of a flag and just sit there and uh, smash it, you can get four billion kills really, really quick. When we were playing on Tobruk, you actually heard me tell Bruce, try to ram this guy with my uh, Jeep, see if it does anything. I'll sit there and try to grenade him. You heard me ask Bruce, if you remember it all, to uh, next time we come across that lone point, don't take it, just sit there and kill the guys. Because it is the most cheese dick fucking way of grabbing kills, especially in a server that has instant respawn, unfortunately. Or the next best thing to instant respawn, there's like one... One second, two seconds, something like that. Uh, I've got a couple rounds. Let's see if they're enough for this guy. Uh, yep, they were very close. And ended up dying to something else. Grab the old Atchival. This is the Japanese version of the Allies SBD. They all spawn with equivalent planes. Just, well, roughly equivalent planes. I mean, they all have a fighter. They all have a bomber. Um, the Atchival uh, basically gets the short end of the stick. It's slow, cumbersome. The Allies SPD is far more maneuverable, and they both get two bombs. They both do the same damage, but the Allies have the better plane. Actual, any of the double bombers, any of the bombers, period, bombers versus fighters, any of the bombers are fun because they're just much easier to bomb with. They have a huge explosion radius. Um, you can see I grabbed a couple kills there. Um, very, very easy to uh, take targets down with. The airfield can be a really deadly area to, uh, oops, got an extra kill there, really deadly area to attack because there's so much flak. There is one here at the end of the airfield. I'm going for that right now. Looks like it's already down. And then there are actually two. When I was approaching it, if you look off to right, there's actually two off to the right as well. IMO, that is way, 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 way too much flak. And some of that definitely needs to go. Um, they can all reach the airfield. Anybody that's around those flag positions has massive, massive uh, ability to draw planes. 
And like I said, they're not really utilized in competitive play. They're more used to uh, drop people in um, in uh, pub matches. But when you have that many up, what ends up happening is right now people aren't actually utilizing them a whole lot, which is really cool. But what ends up happening is people get more and more tired of getting hit by air targets. They'll start abusing those harder and harder, and it becomes really difficult to uh, to fly planes in uh, in pub play, basically. So fucking dickhead just got my kills because uh, there's so much flak going off at all times. The other thing with flak that they end up being used for is um, they use them. They'll turn them on infantry and tanks. Uh, the flak they should have a minimum area that they cannot drop farther down. You know they can't go down. I don't know if that makes any sense. They have to aim up a certain amount, and if they're not aiming up, then they should be aiming up. Anyway, because the reason why I say that is because flak are very, very effective against tanks and things like that, especially long range. And it's it's infuriating to have somebody turn flak on you from you know a mile away and have them drop your fucking tank with it or be killing infantry. Uh, this point is actually one of them that you can do it at. They will. I'll turn it on the uh, the tank over here as you go to take this point. It can be really frustrating. You can see the other plane. So I'm flying. Uh, I have a good amount of speed, uh, a decent amount of speed, I should say, uh, to do basically what is called loot bombing. Um, you can see the other plane. If he comes in, if he comes in, he is uh, he's very 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 slow. Uh, he's not dropping bombs at an angle. He's dropping them. You know. Oh, there we go. <laughs> He's trying to run to the uh, the flak, which is kind of funny. Anyway, shitty pilots have very little altitude, very little speed. They they don't draw bombs precision because they can't due to um, God, this is bad. Due to uh, it being very difficult to aim a bomb that you drop from you know being completely horizontal. This is the flak down to this stage. I'm gonna double bomb, take this asshole out. See you later. Flak responds. I don't know, one or two minutes. So. I basically got free reign at this point right now. Uh, guns will take down one of these APCs. Um, what is it? APCs. The um, well, any of the APCs, either the Axis or Allies, any of the Jeeps guns will take any of those down at any time. So uh, it's kind of nice. You can save some rounds doing that. You can get more ammunition, I believe, if your plane spawns at. Um, the airfield, you can fly over the airfield, and then if it spawns the carrier, you can fly over the carrier, you'll refill your, your bullets and ammunition. Oh, this could be juicy. Mm, only picked up one. Actually, I was hoping to drop those bombs right in the middle of that jeep, and then pick up both the kills for the jeep and the uh, the guy standing next to it. Actually, I only ended up getting the guy next to it. Let's see, what else do we have here? Not really seeing anything, and still just kind of run around using guns. Okay, so this beach point, um, one of the sort of secrets to capping that beach point there is, uh, you can see me here trying to refill it, I don't think it works, because I think I might need to go to the carrier. You may even need to go to the carrier on this map, even if you pick up your plane as if you're Japanese on the airfield. I can't remember, I just have not played the game in long enough. Anyway, one of the secrets to capping that beach point is actually being able to sit in the def gun. You can cap it from there, which is kind of nice sometimes. Uh, there we go, filling up this bad boy. For some reason, they seem to be filling up really slow. Usually, they fill up a little bit faster. Um, as you can see, someone has taken the destroyer and rammed our carrier with it. People love to do all sorts of dipshit moves like that all the time. I couldn't really tell you why. It's hard to get aimed up with the carrier when it is constantly sliding sideways as a result of being T-boned by the destroyer. Isn't that lovely? Um, the beach point is one of the best spots to spawn camp. Right now, that guy, instead of being an asshole and ramming the fucking carrier with the destroyer, he should be getting in that and coming around to the beach point because as a result of that, he could be dropping massive fucking destroyer rounds all over the beach and just spawn camping the ever-loving shit out of them. Uh, very few times have I ever been in the position to drop merciless fucking ponage on the beach flag um, when it's the only flag they have and I'm in the destroyer. But every time it's happened, it is so sweet. 
and so fucking delicious. It feels so good. Um, but I guess, I guess he would rather sit here and just ram it into our fucking carrier. Usually people do one of two things with the vehicles. They, um, yep, see you later. You guys aren't going anywhere. They will either ram them into each other or run them right off the fucking map. So, isn't that nice? Being flagged out of the sky right now. I'm going to bail out. See if I can just capture this flag, because the rest of my team is seemingly unable to do anything. Um, there is a little pause when you bail out and you parachute. Um, unfortunately, it's a little bit random. Sometimes it's longer than others. Um, and before you can fire, and so that can throw you off sometimes. I think I bailed out in front of a guy earlier tonight in a you know, different round, and I just stood there looking like a fucking idiot while he gunned me down in the face. Um, because it wouldn't ready my gun, so um, that delay is sometimes a little bit random. It's not always consistent, unfortunately. Um, there's a few other bugs. Oh, isn't that nice? Gonna get the SPD. He's gonna ram me with his fucking APC and take it for himself. Uh, I'm sure he'll do just as well as I would have in it. God, I would have loved that SPD. The SPD is such a great fucking plane. Absolutely love it. Um. There's a few different weapons bugs. There's a weapon switch bug where if you try to switch, it will not switch. Um, it's usually something that you only see as the medic class. You know, you're trying to switch back and forth from your gun gun to your med pack to heal yourself. And uh, um, anyway, it won't actually switch to the gun. So you can stand there basically looking like an idiot holding your fucking dick. And um, that guy's going to gun you down. Uh, there's another bug, same thing. Uh, you go to throw grenades, and the grenade it will throw, but it won't actually make the animation. You can feel that it actually did toss it, so you just have to keep aiming. It'll it's like a delayed throw. It's kind of goofy. Um, let's see. The, oh, there's another. There's a reload bug on guns as well, where you go to reload them, and there's actually two different reload bugs. There's a reload bug where you trying to grab these fucking points? I'm so greedy. Oh my god, I think I got them. I'm trying. There's a reload bug where you uh, go to reload your gun and it'll reload like one round. I'm not sure if they fixed that one or not. There's another bug where sometimes when you pick up a new kit, it will reload it, but it won't actually reload the gun. I think it just puts in the same thing the one round, and you have to reload it again. If you guys have played this game, you'll have noticed that like the reload animations are significantly longer. Oh, just ran his shit down. They are significantly longer than they are in COD. Um, it, it was one of the things, I actually like that. It's a good balance change. It means that you can't just sit there and spray you know, hundreds and hundreds of rounds and reload and come around all over again. When somebody reloads, they, well, I mean, they have... They have quite a bit of time before getting flagged down. I wanted to fly to the other point, but I guess we'll just have to try to take this one. Gonna try to jump some grenades up here and take these guys down. Oh, got surprise attacked by that guy, and uh, kind of ran into his uh, line of fire there. That was my bad. Um, so, I don't even remember what I was saying with that. Reload bugs, bailing out. Anyway, usually when I want to take those points, the points that I like to take are the northmost point, the southwestern point, basically northwest, southwest. Um, I'm going to take that. Mm, bail right into that. If you actually bail into, a, if you bail into a tank, if you're good and you bail right on top of it, you actually don't need to even parachute, you can just hold E and you'll fall right into it. <laughs> Which always makes me laugh thinking about how that would actually be IRL. Some dude just bailing out of a plane and being perfectly, falling perfectly through the cockpit of it or whatever. Um, but I always parachute to be on the safe side. There's really no reason to, uh, like I said, unless you're in some competitive plane, you're trying to like stealth take something right out from somebody's nose and you don't think you have enough time to fucking parachute. You can parachute depending on the angle you're coming in and pull your parachute right before you get there. Oh, these guys are a bunch of fucking winners. Um, couldn't really tell you what they intended to do with that jeep there. It's getting some good fucking killing here at the end. Oh, guess there's another guy in there. 
waiting to get zooked in the ass. Uh, you know, with this instant re, well, closer to instant respawn stuff, it's almost a better idea. 101 points, 65 and 7. Should have been 65 and 6. I pulled a brain dead move there at the end, but it kind of worked out. Um, could have been less deaths at one point in time. Would have been less deaths. A little bit embarrassing. I think one of the cool things to do though is to compare it to the other guys, like the next dude on my team. 54, 54 points, 34 kills, 24 deaths. Next guy to that, 8 and 23, 30 points. 17, 29. 29 points, 22 and 16. Um, so obviously something is going on there. I don't, really don't know why their scores are so bad, how you could possibly die that many times and get that few points. I don't know. I've actually seen worse. Hope you guys liked it. If not, there will be other rounds out soon.